Hey booktube, happy Friday. This is Kelly and thank you so much for watching my channel, Books I'm Not Reading. It's a Friday Reads video and I have quite a bit of stuff to talk to you guys about. So it might go a little bit longer than normal and also I might use some language that I don't normally use on this channel. So just a disclosure there at the beginning. The first thing is we have to do some shouting out of some new booktubers that I hope you guys will check out. So the first one is called The Poet's Artifacts um, and that is uh, Garrett and he's only made a couple of videos. He's still really nervous about being in front of the camera and I've tried to encourage him to do the booktube newbie tag but um, I'm very excited for another poetry channel on booktube and um, yeah so I hope you guys will go and say hi and welcome to um, booktube and poetry tube uh, Garrett and the other one is the channel of a disappointed man Jason Kennedy um, and Jason has had his channel go Jason yeah Jason's had his channel up for about a month he did a video three years ago about graduate school and then and then he restarted it about a month ago and he's interested in talking about classic literature and things like that so I'm super super excited again I hope that you guys will go and visit um, visit these channels and welcome them to our community okay um, the next thing I'm gonna talk about something selfishly here okay so the end of this month is my four-year anniversary on booktube and I put a poll up on my community tab I'm gonna show you where that is you can only access the community tab um, on a phone or your computer you can't access it on a tablet so I know I know I don't know why that is but so if you go to my channel and there's all the little tabs up above and there is community and so I really wanted some feedback about what we should do to celebrate four years of books I'm not reading um, and I realize in hindsight that I should have had maybe some mix the options up a little bit more or maybe possibly added an option um, I only have 46 votes though and I really you know um, yeah I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do anything if if that's I, I don't want to make a video. I don't want to make a Q&A video and only have 30 of you be interested in that and want to watch that, that kind of thing. And it is completely anonymous. Um, for those of you who like to remain in the shadows, I have no idea who is voted in what category. I don't even know who's voted. So please, please go to my community tab and vote. Um, there is an other option. So if there's a, a tag or um, another kind of video that you would like me to make, um, somebody has made a really great suggestion and I will be making that video. And I wanted to thank you guys. I don't know how well you can see my shirt. This is the Walk to End Epilepsy shirt. Um, and Jason did a fundraiser on his platform and for some reason I got all the swag, hence the pom-poms. I got pom-poms and I, I, I feel really bad, like there's a bunch of swag that I would love to share with some of you, but um, unfortunately, I know, I, I don't always know who has donated um, and I would love to send thank you cards to everyone who donated and I just don't know 
I don't know who who everyone is that's donated and I don't have an address for everyone. So for those of you who supported um, Jason's uh, fundraising efforts for a walk to end epilepsy, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate your kindness and your generosity on that. And if you're new to my channel, I have epilepsy. Get into what has, what have I been reading? So last weekend, man, oh man, I spent a lot of time with the women's room by Marilyn French. I think I read over a hundred pages in one day, which for me, I know that's not that big of a deal for many of you. For me, that is like a Herculean effort. Okay. Um, so the women's room, um, and this is maybe where we're, gonna get into some some language issues I don't know it is it is very challenging it's a challenging read in part because it was published in 1977 so you have to think about the world in those kind of terms um, the first I would say half of the book at least takes place in like the 1950s so thinking about what the world was like then what was going on, what things were happening. And then of course we get into the sixties and it comes up to, you know, the present day, it comes up to, to 1977 at the end. Um, it is about, I mean, there are, there are so many women characters in this book. It's just phenomenal. And they are all different. You can tell that Marilyn French in her mind, these were all completely distinct characters with different views, different attitudes. We have all these stereotypes of what it meant to be a housewife in the 1950s. Yeah, you could see why women felt trapped and stifled. Um, you know, their job was automatically to, you know, raise the children and uh, keep the house clean and have dinner ready when their husbands came home. And then the second half of it, so um, when the main character is 38, she goes off to study at Harvard. Um, and so she's there with some women who are close to her age or around her age, but of course a lot of younger women. And it's about that set of women, again, who are all completely different, completely just, you know, their own, their own person. Um, and these young people keep coming to Mira, um, the main character, or Val, another character, um, for advice. Um, and and it's, it's fascinating because they feel trapped at Harvard. Um, you know, they, they're unsure of themselves. They don't know what to do with their life. And, and she's just thinking like, you know, you, you have so many options. Like, okay, so what if you don't get this accepted for a certain fellowship? Like then you'll go off and you'll teach somewhere else or whatever, you know, that, that kind of thing. So, so she just really brings like a different sort of presence and attitude to this group that she is with. Now, when this book was published in 1977, it was raked over the coals by the critics um, because there, there are a variety of perspectives in here about men. Um, and there's one particular, there's one character in particular who is, I yeah, I mean, I, she's anti-men, like, and I don't mean that she's a lesbian. I mean that um, she thinks all men are bastards, all men are rapists. Um, she's she hates men by the time the book is over and is willing to go to extreme measures. That is one perspective in the book. That is not the whole book. Although, even just trying to articulate some of the things in this book to Jason was my, my own husband who I've known, um, my God, for more than 20 years. Uh, so yeah, like even just trying to talk to him about some of the stuff in this book. And I can't really imagine um, what it would have been like in 1977 because there's you know, discussion of um, masturbation. 
uh, by women, uh, orgasms. There is a very steamy sex scene um, at one point in the book. Uh, there is um, a horrific rape scene. Uh, just, just a lot. There is a lot in this book. Um, and so while I give Marilyn French, um, major kudos for articulating women so well, the men are, are pretty, um, lifeless and I don't know, like, uh, they're not, they're not as developed as characters, um, as well as the women Popular. are. So even though it was raked over by critics, like, women were able to see themselves in a novel for the first time, really, um, in, in, in a feminist novel. The feminine, feminist mystique had been published before, but there, there hadn't been any feminist novels yet, which I think is, again, hard for us in 2022 to imagine that there's no book that portrays like what a woman's life is like, and uh, what options and choices are available to women. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, I, I see what, what they're saying about the, the, the male characters not being anywhere near as developed, but, but this book is really more about what it was like to be a woman at that time. Um, you know, the title in and of itself, um, uh, one of the introductions in the book talks about how anytime there was like kind of a call to action or, um, you know, they wanted to get the attention of women, they would put posters up in the women's room because they were guaranteed like, like they knew women would read what was in their bathroom. And another quote that I found, um, so somebody uh, talked about how when this book came out, in paperback, um, they were writing. Um, they were on the subway, and they looked around, and five, five women were reading the women's room. You can see why it sold twenty million copies, and has been translated into twenty different languages. Um, and that is the sheer power of word of mouth uh, from women. It didn't need to get. It didn't need to get glowing reviews because women were actively sharing it and passing it on to other women that they knew. Um, Gloria Steinem actually said that uh, the women's room, quote, expressed the experience of a huge number of women and let them know that they were not alone and not crazy. And I thought that was really great, a really great description of it. I am not saying, <laughs> Like, there were definitely moments in this book I was uncomfortable um, and I would be really curious of those 20 million copies sold uh, you know how many men actually actually have read it and I can see I can see why men would be you know especially today I would I would never ever say all men are rapists um, you know all men are evil, trash. I don't believe that at all. Um, but I, I think that Marilyn French was was really trying to show a huge spectrum of the women's experience in the time that she was living. And um, yeah, so it, it, there are still things in here, um, unfortunately that are relevant today and the so when I after I'd finished it I was just like <gasps> overwhelmed a little bit and I uh spent Sunday evening watching an old good like 90s like summer action movie you know and I'm not gonna say what I'm not gonna say what the film is but it was so weird there was this line in it where you know the hero is handing the money over to the you know wicked woman character in the film and he says here you go you know you've earned it and it was such like a, a lightning bolt kind of moment for me because it just it just pulled me right back into this book and I was like oh yeah of course of course she must be a whore right like 
<laughs> if she's gonna be, you know, be, do these wicked things, like, she must be, you know, we must accuse her of, of that kind of behavior. So, um, yeah, I, I just, it was, it was very strange. As I kind of wrap up this little mini review of the women's room, uh, Marilyn French wrote one of the um, prefaces um, to this book and um, I think she wrote it in 2009 which I believe is also also the year she died. Um, <clears throat> so she writes, uh, when I was asked in 1977 what I would wish for the women's room, I said I wished for a world in which no one would comprehend it because women and men had found a way to live together in felicity. Unfortunately, despite many easements on female life in the West, the world's ethos has moved in the opposite direction toward more hostility between the sexes. So severe is the situation today that I can imagine a time when novels like this one will not be allowed to be published. It is therefore still brave, brave of Penguin to publish it even after all these years. So anyway, so yes, it is a watershed book. It is an important um, book. I don't know how long it will be in print. I would think if it, if it did have future editions, there would need to be some footnotes and things like that in it. Um, but yeah, a really, really incredible reading experience. Um, again, I'm not sure quite like who to recommend this to, but if you're interested in feminist, liter feminist literature, then this is, this is the place to start. So, okay. Other things I've been reading. So I'm still reading. I know you guys, I'm still reading American Primitive by Mary Oliver. I think I think the reason why, well, A, it's poetry, so that naturally makes it a little bit slower, um, but it feels like a winter, a wintry uh, collection of poems, and so I wish I was reading it when it was cold outside instead of, instead of warm. Um, I don't know if that is really going to be the case all the way through, but um, anyway, so I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep going. Um, and then I also started Perma Red by Deborah Magpie Erling. This takes place on the Flathead Reservation, which is in um, Montana. It may include parts of Idaho, I'm not sure. Um, and oh gosh, there's blurbs on the back from Louise Erdrich, uh, Sherman Alexi, James Welch. Um, I don't know if some of you are familiar with James Crumley. Um, anyway, so she um, taught uh, at the University um, of Montana where Jason went to graduate school. I'm not sure if we bought it in Montana or not, but um, Jason did have her sign it at some, some bookish event. I think this book is out of print now, which is really sad. Um, I thought I was gonna fly through this book, especially after the women's room, which felt so dense. Um, but this is actually going slower than I expected, but it still is really, um, really beautiful and um, just a, a really interesting story. So I'm enjoying it. I like hearing about places that I've been to or places that I'm familiar with. Um, I am familiar with, with some of the, the, the towns and the, the landscape that is discussed in this book. Um, so it's not as great as Louise, Louise Erdrich, but it is still, um, it is still a good book. So if you see this at a used bookstore somewhere or God only knows a little free library, you definitely should, um, should grab it. So, okay, booktube. I know this has been longer than normal. Thank you for watching. Remember to be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I will talk to you later. Bye.